It's time for Show Off Sunday, where everyone has a chance to show off their own car, and here's this week's winner. Truly JDM car, only sold in Japan, for Japanese people and for Japanese roads. This is the Daihatsu Move Custom 2014. It's a small K car, which starts around 1.5 million yen, that's $13,000, which is cheap compared to regular cars. Daihatsu is a company fully owned by Scotty. Oh, I mean, Toyota. So today, I'm going to show you the interesting quirks and features that we can find with the Daihatsu Move Custom 2014. After that, I'm going to drive around, see how it feels to drive a K car. Under the hood is a 658cc water-cooled inline 3-cylinder dual overhead cam, 12-valve intercooled turbo mated with a CVT and a tank capacity of 34 liters that does around 20 kilometers per liter or 50 miles per gallon for its order stand. In front, it has a 4 LED low beam headlights, LED position lights and tail lights, halogen for high beam and fogs, and an incandescent reverse lamp and turn signal for the rear and front winkers. This particular model is equipped with an optional aluminum wheels with a 155-65 14-inch studless tires. It also has an automatic folding side mirrors, which opens when you start the car and closes when you lock the door from the outside. Now let's check out the inside of the Daihatsu Move Custom 2014. As you can see, the door opens a very wide, 90 degrees, and the front seats are actually bench type. So you can go from here to here without any problem, or you can also sit here, but apparently that's illegal, but apparently you can. Let's go inside the Daihatsu Move Custom 2014 and see what quality materials we have for this cheap car. Let's start by shutting the door. <laughs> sounds good. It's all Daihatsu platform, so still sounds pretty solid for its price. And the steering wheel says Momo, small leather wrapped. Start button is located here with the traction control, collision mitigation, and eco idle button. To start the car, just press on the brake pedal and the start button, just like any other cars. Can you start up? and you can hear the three-cylinder engine from the inside. It's not that loud. So the cup holders here in front of the air vent, you just have to press to pull it out. And on the dash, we have an analog for the tachometer and the speedometer, a digital panel for the trip and odometer, outside temperature and mileage, and other warnings and status. And the shift levers on the dashboard with different modes with sports and engine brake mode. Single zone climate control is also here, And above is the navigation system with no Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. If you want, you can just always replace this with an aftermarket head unit easily anyways. This is an old car. Below, we'll find only one 12 volt plug. This has a small battery, so there's no USB charger. You have to buy an aftermarket USB charger for that. Below that, there's also a place to put anything here which is not padded and no wireless charging. For the glove compartment, for this car size, it's very small. It only has enough room for one manual. And on top, there's also a place for you to place your tissue box. And for the door panels, looking at here, we have the place to control the side mirrors, the windows, but there's only one automatic control for the windows here. And if you have a child, you can lock the windows. Here's the lock switch. And this is not metal, this is plastic. The materials are all textured hard plastics. And of course, piano black near the places where we touch most often, so they can spy on our fingerprints. It's a conspiracy, I know. They want our fingerprints. Just listen to the plastic. Plastic everywhere. You won't find anything soft here besides the seats. And even the steering wheel is hard. It's very hard, even the steering wheel. And the e-brake is down there, 
along with the other pedals and the center console for the armrest. So it's also hard, don't expect much. This is a cheap car. Now let's check out the back. So just like the four other doors, it opens very wide, 90 degrees. So as you can see, there's not much you can place here at the back. You can actually fold this easily, just like that. So it will just not just double, but triple that. I think it will quadruple the space here at the back. And there's also space here under under the <laughs> sorry about that. There's also space here. Like you can see there's a lot of stuff here. There's no spare tire. You only have you only get a quick fix here. It actually has a small lip here, so you can sit here. But it doesn't but the door doesn't open like this. So when it's raining you can't actually wait for someone like this. And just to show you, I'm five feet five inches. I can't fit here, but apparently, it's <laughs> I can't I can't sleep here. There's another interesting quirks here for a K car. What you can do here is to move the seat forward, the back seat, very back. You remove the head headrest here, put it somewhere, and just do this, and you'll be able to relax in your car. So if you have a very long legs, you can actually drive like this from here. So I can imagine that if you're in a pass, you're the passenger. What you can just do is like this. So when you're traveling far away, you can just tell your driver to drive while you relax like this. If you want, you can also use the seat belts here while you relax. And now we're going to try and ride around on this small K car on small Japanese roads. So you can see the turning radius is so small, you can actually make a U-turn just with just a small street. The steering is also very light, but since this has the studless right now, it's a bit hard. So you can see the roads here are very small and narrow. So in case there's another car coming, you have someone's got to back out. This also has the eco idle. So when you're when you're stopped at the traffic, the engine will shut off. Road imperfections are is not going to come through here because the because usually K cars are made for comfort. So the spring is very soft. The, absorb the shock absorption is very good. Road noise, uh, I mean, you can't hear much of the sound from the outside. Oh, okay, you can't make it. You see, that's the problem with Eco Idle. I, sh I should have been able to, to make that turn already. There's not much road noise. You can hear a bit of the sound from the outside. Hey, a Daihatsu Copen being pulled. That's a sports K car. That was the I Had to Move Custom 2014. Hope you liked it. Come visit Japan to experience the real Japanese car culture like no other. And here's a bonus clip for the Leon Mini Fest in Okayama 2018, the small 50cc custom motorbike culture of Japan. Thanks for watching. This is Ken signing out. channel check this out so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell